Finally, Adobe has launched a huge update that myself and I'm sure many other videographers have been waiting for. There are finally over 90 brand new customizable complex drag and drop effects first party in Premiere Pro. These are the types of effects that I would expect from DaVinci Resolve, but finally as a Premiere user and someone who's been using it for like my whole career, I have access to these complex, easy to use and easy to customize effects. So today I'm gonna bring you through them all and talk about like my five or 10 favorites and just show you what they're all about. And basically we're gonna discover how these effects can help you improve your videos. So when you're in Premiere, if you wanna access these effects, you go to Window, Extension, and then click Film Impact Dashboard. Here you can see all of the effects visually, and there's so many in here for you to try, but you can also access them by going to the effects panel and going under video effects or video transitions and finding film impact. But I think it's more intuitive to look at it this way. So you can basically go through and pick whatever you want. There's the essential effects, like some easy ones like stroke and mosaic and like a basic blur and vignette, but these are effects that kind of already existed within Premiere. You can also pick these, I guess, more complicated ones like an echo or a focus blur or edge glow, a bunch of different glows, which is actually really awesome that they have that included now. Or then also things that you previously needed to go to After Effects for, use a plugin for, like camera shakes and wiggles. And, you know, they have these like different keyframe movements as well, like spins and 3D rotations. There's also different transitions, like there's blur dissolves, blur to color, there's chaos. So like all these like random RGB transitions that you would normally make by keyframing manually, you now have actual parameters for using them. So there's tons of stuff, but let's do a few that I've really been enjoying using recently. I have some sample clips on my timeline to show you. So the first one is some of these blurs. They're awesome. Let's grab the focus blur. We're going to apply that. Just select a clip and click apply. And now we can go to our effect panel and actually control this. So something I've really been liking is there's this surprise me button, which is essentially a random generator. So you can just like find inspiration by seeing different ways that this effect could look just by cycling through, which is quite interesting. So for this, you would kind of want to move the position around a little bit with this player. So say we have something like this, we keyframe the position, we're gonna move it around with him. Let's blur that a little less. I like the chromatic aberration, but it's nice that this is built in because adding chromatic aberration in Premiere before was a bit of a mess. So now there's multiple effects of chromatic aberration built into them. Yeah, you know, we can feather this a little bit more if we want. And you just get these like this nice, easy blur effect that draws your attention to your subject, adds a bit of chromatic aberration. Here's what it looks like without, and here's what it looks like with. I think it's nice, it's really useful. I've been enjoying that one already. Another effect that's quite nice is the volumetric raise effect. So if we select this clip here and click apply, then we can have that effect on our clip. And it takes all the white areas and like shoots light out of them as if it's like sun. So this is good for like light coming through a window or something here, just doing it to like the white text, which like, you know, it's not the perfect application, obviously, but the idea of the effect is awesome. So you can, again, you surprise me, to change this however you'd like, make it stronger or less strong, change the direction, all that type of stuff. But there's a lot we can do with this. So let's make the color maybe red to match more with this scene. That's perfect. You can even position it so that the ray length slowly gets longer or something of that nature. Make it a little bit softer in this case. But like, this is great if you have like a scene with someone backlit and silhouetted in front of a window, like this would just add such an extra layer to that shot. and you can see right away the difference this effect makes. It adds like a nice subtle glow to everything and you can like have the rays be as strong as you want. It's really, really cool in my opinion. Let's do one more. I want to add this light leaks effect. So here we have a clip of a hockey player scoring a goal. We'll use this again later as an example when we show off some of the transitions. But for now, let's apply the light leaks effect. And this is what that looks like right off the bat, just default and you can Customize this to be whatever colors you want. Here it's like just red, which is perfect for the player's jersey who's scoring here. Again, you can just cycle through, surprise me, and get all these different types of options. But yeah, let's adjust the hue to be red. I think I like that. Let's bring the speed up a little bit so it cycles through quickly. And look at that. Light leaks 
just built in. You can use them how you want. You can even combine the light leaks effect with some of the blurs to kind of add an even greater effect to something like that mask we made at the start. So if we go back to that, let's add the light leaks effect back onto this clip as well. So we'll come back to our film impact dashboard. We'll add the light leaks and something like this now with the light leaks and the focus blur looks really cool and stylized versus something like this with no effects on it. So if you're going for kind of like a specific look, you have a theme to the video you're making, like this is a really cool way to do it. It looks very dreamy in my opinion. And I think the color of the light leaks work really well with the green jerseys. Here's another clip and let's show you what the camera shake looks like for this. So here's what the clip looks like normally. It's pretty smooth. We're gonna add a camera shake to this by just clicking apply with the clip selected. And now we have our camera shake and we can pick all these different presets. So let's pick earthquake. You'll probably know what that looks like right away. Pretty straightforward. This is similar to like someone coming back from the moon. <laughs> like it's all built in there. We can do a fast walk. So there's what that looks like. I wouldn't use this actual preset for this clip, but you can kind of dial everything in. So here, this is one handed. It's a little bit more of a shake. Maybe let's go slow walk. Obviously like the more shake you add, the more you're punching into your clip. So like that's gonna obviously make the clip look worse. Like the more shake you add, cause like scaling into your clip is just gonna make that noise that much bigger. But you have the option now to add all this stuff and you can even add motion blur and choose how much motion blur you want. You can choose the speed, you can choose how stable you want it to be. I don't know if this is like the number one clip that I would choose to add handheld motion to, but if you had something that was locked off and you wanted to add a bit of motion, or if you had a clip that was supposed to be a very shaky and you didn't want to necessarily add that in camera for a risk of getting it wrong, you could just shoot it a little bit wider, add all your shake and post, and it would be like built into Premiere and look really good. So that's great. Now let's go through one of the things that really get me excited about this, which is the transitions. So a few of the transitions that I like, if you just like both of the clips, are these blur ones. So we have like a blur chroma, a blur dissolve, all that stuff. So this is what the blur chroma looks like. Nice and smooth. And you can just drag it out the same you would a regular transition to make this longer or shorter. So that's obviously very long and this is very short. A nice little flash. Let's also look at blur dissolves and that's a pretty basic one that you'll probably use a lot. Something like that, very fun. Obviously you have your more uh, like, let's call them trendy transitions. So here's chaos, which is great. You can shorten that up and we can like customize it as much as we want as well. And again, you can also use a surprise me button. So here's a bunch of chromatic aberration built in. You can do like so much to this, like stretch it vertically or horizontally. There's so many different options. And again, if you don't like what you see, just click the surprise me button a few times. There's also all of these like really basic motion transitions that are built in now, which is nice like pushes and rolls. So here's what a push looks like. That's obviously quite slow. These are all transitions that you're going to want to customize, but like this is nice that you can even change the way that the frame like pushes. So you can have it overshoot a little bit. I didn't love that, but you can work on that and you can have it like a bounce. So there's like different ways you can animate it in. I might just leave this as a Bezier. You can change the ease in and ease out, which is really helpful and do that customized as well. You can have it go left or right or up or down, make that really tight and have it go quickly. So there's tons of ways that you can use these like different direction push effects and having like all the different parameters, like the easing and the motion blur and all that stuff built in as sliders is excellent. And the fact that there's presets that you can start with like that bounce and the overshoot, and then you can ease that in the way you want. I think that's an excellent addition and it saves you a lot of time from having to like otherwise finick around with the transform effect to create something that now you can create like in, in seconds really. So there's also a lot of other more simple transitions like glows and light leaks and blurs, but like built as transitions, not effects. So if I highlight these two clips, you can add a glow, which is pretty straightforward. Here's the player running. Here's the player scoring. Nice little transition in between that. You can also do this with light leaks and blurs. So here's the light leaks transition on the same clip. Pretty straightforward. Normally you use plugins for that or have to buy like a third party software. And now you don't need to, which is excellent. You can even do like some simple blurs. So like here's like a zoom blur. That might look good if you do it like really quickly. So something like this maybe. So you get like a blurry zoom in effect that normally you would have had to go to after effects to do. And now you just don't, which is 
Excellent. So here's when I see myself using a lot, which could be this glitch 2.0 effect. I feel like I'm always trying to like edit different variations of glitch transitions with different presets. So now you just drop that on and you get something that looks like that. Obviously they're all customizable. So we can mess around that. I'd rather just surprise me a couple times and see what comes up. And that's great. I love it. That's crazy. That's crazy. Maybe just change the color to red. We can even change the vertical distortion more if we want and horizontal distortion less. There we go. Now it's not like horizontal lines. Now it's more random. And there you go. That's a glitch effect built in that you can use however you want and customize to your exact liking very quickly. There are so many other effects and transitions in this update that I didn't even get to in this video. And I really encourage you to dive into Premiere and check them out for yourself because I showed you like five or 10, but remember there's like 90 or something in here. It's crazy. Like this is a game changing update for sports videographers like me. And I think like all creative people who make video, like this is huge for Premiere users. But yeah, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel because I make videography and video editing tips and tutorial videos like this one. I post them on a regular basis and I'd love to have you around for those. But that's gonna be all I got for you this time. So until the next one, peace.